it's showtime. Good morning, everyone. Wake up. Not quite so cold out there today. I'll tell you more about the rain in just a moment. Thank you, Zach. Hey, All right, Jamie. Hey, Jamie, hey. what do you get? Oh, I mean, shut up, Sue. Shut up. No, Good no. morning, I'm Jamie Cooper. This is Athens in the AU. Back in action on this new year, trying to get through it. Still suffering from that defeat, beat down, humiliating loss. At oh, oh, yeah. We hey, listen to all our coaches. What, what does Clemens and the Moon have in common? They control the tide. Yeah, woohoo! Go Tigers. I think he's a Clemson fan now, uh, Brad. Right. Yeah. Zach, you got to accept reality. I accept reality. We got beat. Saban's oh. leaving. Saban's it's the leaving. season. Jalen transferred yesterday. The sun's still Saban's came. going to well, Troy. The sun did. It's part of the Saban's going to Troy. We're still going to be fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Let me get into the weather. I got my <laughs> guest finally right. You think, you think a man that could climb Mount, Mount Everest could get to a studio on time? He's right? tired, <laughs> for, he's tired <laughs> from climbing. What are you talking about? He, he's exhausted. So my let, goodness. Let me go to the weather right now. Y'all hang on. Cut him some slack. 41 degrees out there this morning, but things are going to warm up just a little bit. We'll see temperatures around mid 40s. And we do have rain, 80% chance of rain today. So, not luckily, not the bad weather that's scheduled for the, or scheduled, that's supposed to be coming in over the weekend. But high temperatures today, maybe 48. Maybe Tomorrow, 54. I doubt it. Saturday, definitely rain. And be careful, it could be some severe weather moving on in with a low of 28. Look at Sunday, 34 and 20. Good. For that low, still go yeah. to church. I'm going to Alaska, so it'll it, be it's... warm there. <laughs> Savewithgloria.com. If you want well, to like refinance, I said, when I got home. on my Alexa the other day, I said, <laughs> "What is the temperature going to be in Kansas City for the championship game coming up Sunday?" You did. The high of minus one. Rob, good morning. Good morning. Good to have you back in action. I'm, I'm When's the last time you was in our studio? It's been years. It has many, been. many years. Where's your makeup and hair people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all did that before the show. Right. 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 We're, we're a little tight on money. We got rid of them. <laughs> we had to fire them. I'm not even getting paid. Trivia question. <laughs> Trivia question. Who's he look like? What famous actor in a, one of my most all time greatest movies? Yo, Adrian. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> Rocky. That ain't the first time you've heard Rocky. of that, is it? Oh, there you are. Thank you very much, Jamie Gloria. I appreciate that. Thank you. Man, you, you've been it doing a lot of lifting. You, you, must, you must quit lifting. I wish you knew how to Photoshop. I don't know. He does, he does appearances Mark, for him. Your hometown is New York City. It's New York, New York City. City. Oh, my God. When y'all wait, y'all late. Don't, wake up. Don't tell everybody that. Keep it on the low. Keep it on the low. <laughs> I don't want to be with Joe Carlucci. The only two people I know from up there. So, uh, Where are they from? We're going to talk to Rob just a little bit. He is a financial advisor now over in East Limestone. Actually, uh, up in Fayetteville, Tennessee. Fayette, well, that's right. A couple of years ago, yeah. yeah relocated up there. Mm -hmm. he, climbed yeah. Yeah, he climbed that mountain, too. Yeah, he climbed that mountain. He can help you, you climb the mountain. Fayette, well, are you? Uh, no, I'm still here. So. Okay. And you uh, pastor a church in Decatur. Excellent church. Chapel Hill United Methodist Church. The only thing I've got to say against your church over there, uh -oh. I read the article in Decatur Daily. Yeah. Your music director. Tommy Ray. <laughs> Tommy Ray. He's the best. We love Tommy. We love Tommy. Oh, I love Tommy too, man. He's been up here done our shows. He's still working at Jimmy Smith, I'm sure. He's yep. an awesome guy. He said Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. Jewelers. Yeah, the jewelers. Still working yeah, at Jimmy. We're going to talk about your trip up Everest because we saw Randy and went, the few times I've been to the gym, I saw Rob in there warming up to go to Everest. Yeah. So, anyway. Donnie is, uh, Joseph's not here today. Joseph works for NASA and he changed your into water. For astronauts. That's so awesome. we have our own, too. Oh, so stop we it. make it too. We got it here. <laughs> and Greg's a it's teacher, right. coach out at West Limestone. Both of these guys used to work on a submarine in the Navy. Yeah, you that, that was a Navy man. Yeah, yeah. so it's now it makes you feel important. You're up here. It's the only way to go. <laughs> You're up here <laughs> among royalty. Navy. All right, let's go to sports, Zach. Let's hear it. Tell me more about Babel, how we ever going to regroup from that embarrassing beat down. Hey, we'll be fine. Welcome to ZTV 11 Sports Four, brought to you by down. KFC, I the best Alaska. fried chicken in Athens and Lyme. Is Alabama doing away with the football And program? also by Applebee's Stillgate Talk. We'll be talking Alabama and high school athletics 10 to 12 on 1080 AM. Women volleyball. KC. Hey, uh, tonight at Greenbrier, if you're out and about, and Alabama fans still like to get together and talk, even though we got beat. Yeah, that's uh, fine, Bob. We'll have former Alabama great Antonio Langham will be at Greenbrier tonight. So come out here, Antonio. How and many hush puppies do you eat? Oh, uh, don't, don't, don't ask <laughs> Coach Peter, Coach Larry, Lee. Hush puppies are free out there. How many do you eat? Uh, <laughs> Bastards. I don't need to eat that many. Just a doggy bag. Like <laughs> All right, Clint, text me. Yeah, he, he'll yeah, text Clint, you. Tell us how many he eats. He'll text and tell you. But, uh. 
Yeah, we won't talk about that. But hey, uh, last night, you don't have this, but Alabama Auburn both won in basketball if anybody cares. So. Nobody cares. I know. No. Yeah, Todd does. Todd loves basketball. Waiting on football season. As long as you play in LSU, we beat uh, you. That's all that matters. Er, the big news everybody heard yesterday, Jalen made it official. And if you hadn't read that article on Players Tribune, one of the best articles I ever read. Yeah, he went I from mean, the major leagues to I the mean, minors. He, uh, he really, I mean, it was from the heart. You can tell that kid. Coach Pugh's devastated. Coach Pugh thought he would stay. I told, I told him, I said, it was time for him. Yeah, Coach Pugh thought, thought he was going to stay. I said all along he'd go to I said, I said, uh, yeah, why I said wouldn't he, you? Uh, big football fan. Why wouldn't you? Said, hey, the last it, it two. Was time, it was time, you know, and Oklahoma gives him the best chance to, to play for a national championship. So, uh, he could win the Heisman. But, yeah, I mean, the last two have that transfer. We'll see, there. but uh, I'll pull for you, pull for you, Jalen, uh, except when you play for Alabama and it's rolled out all the way. But uh, Tosh LePoy is not for the Saints. Tosh LePoy, it was announced last night, he will be the new D line coach for Freddie Kitchens with the Cleveland Browns. So, congratulations, Tosh. Well, we don't, I know coaches in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> last one at the, out the door, turn the light. Well, I can see Pew leaving. Pugh's going to be yeah, gone. Yeah, Coach Pugh, we're trying, to get, him be over there we're trying to get him hired down there. Can you imagine uh, that game, too? I did moment yeah. for C.J. Yarbrough. He, he didn't get Mr. Football the other day, but you think about it. He was one of 48 kids out of 31,000 kids that could have been there. So, so big, big moment for C.J. Love that guy and wish him well up there with Liberty. Uh, Bo Nix, Auburn's all excited about this guy. They think he's going to be their next starter, and he was announced as the 37th Mr. Football. So. Almost on, we'll say he's the next Heisman winner. So congratulations to him. And like I said, this is Jalen's <laughs> quote. Now I'm Bama for life, and that right, they will never change. But it's also time for me to start a new chapter in my life. So Until he plays best Bama, luck to then you, what's he going to do? Everybody's still panicking over Steve Sarkeesian. But the Atlanta Falcons did have the six best. He got fired, but they had the six best hey, offense in the NFL last year. Hired him yet. Uh, it, they so, said he's been on the, in, in on the interviews. He's been on interviews for a lot of offenses right players, now. So. So. And this weekend, like I said, it's going to be some good football, NFL football. Saints and the Rams. Everybody remembers that game I had last time, and, and the Chiefs and the Patriots. It's going to be cold, and everybody's thinking that's – but, hey, that's, Tom Brady loves that. <laughs> that's his type of weather. So, what's it going to be? What did Alexa say it was going to be, Jamie? Minus one. Minus one. So, that's going to be awesome. So, it's awesome. So, so you don't say – That's too bad New York City. New York, New York City. City. <laughs> don't have no team to play real good football these days. Right? Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate that. I love being a guest on your show. I love this every time I hear it. See, it's a reason that's been years. <laughs> it's either the Yankees or – no, no. They, well, they, I like the Yankees. No way. I'm a I'm Yankee, Yankee fan, man. I'm a both football teams were hurting this I just want to tell you that it was 50 years ago, I haven't talked much about it, but this past weekend, one of the greatest games in history To Clint text you? Coach, Coach Lee, of I'm course, he's watching. Thanks, Coach. Tonight, Zach will eat between 60 to 70 <laughs> hush puppies and finish it with a bowl of ice. You should have asked Alexa that. Alexa, how hey, many hush puppies is Zach going to eat? Wait till you see the gift that Todd and I presented Zach with this morning up here to give to Coach Pew. Yeah, I'll give yeah. that to Coach Pew. Well, <laughs> as a matter of fact, okay, what Rodney Carrick can sing the song. 50 years ago, year before you was born, you, well, the year I was born, actually, 69. Okay. So I'm coming up on 50. All right. Joe Namath Don't the New it. York Jets <laughs> beat the Baltimore Yes, he did. In what was probably, they were an 18-point underdog in that game. Wow. Joe Willie. Well, Alabama fan, Joe Willie Namath is the greatest quarterback ever to play football. Now you'll in have my people opinion. to speak. And that. Dusty's opinion. And a lot of people don't know, he was one of the first guys to throw for 4,000 yards back before passing was the big thing as it is today. He, Oh, yeah. I'll take Peyton Manning. 4,000 yards. That's and you saw him in Panty Hall Stadium, Peyton Manning was, Peyton Manny was good, man. Peyton Manning Joe was good. Joe was the great. He made football what it is. If not for Joe Namath, the NFL might probably still be years behind. Uh -huh. True. Yeah, I can agree. You with interviewed him too, didn't you? I Danny? interviewed him. Naked. He saw him naked. Sure oh, my gosh. That's Terry Bradshaw's naked all the time. You ought to go interview him. <laughs> <laughs> but. Joe, let's see what you got, yeah. Brad. You worry me about this photo. We have here. to say good morning to Miss Louise Gardner. Thad's oh, yeah. It's one of our loyal viewers. Yes, a friend of old friend. Thad that was on the show the other day. She could, how do you know those people? Stay <laughs> <laughs> real last Thursday. Thank you for watching. Thanks started. for watching, Lois. Give you a shout out this morning. I know she said I was her all time favorite ever personal. <laughs> I don't know about huh? that. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you hey, that. Let me come I thought Bruce Robin. Jenner was the, like the number one athlete in the country. Oh. Depending on which way he's going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break and be right back. Y'all hang on.
Let's go, Zach. Zach! Zach. I, I hit him. Just, I'm skinny tag. <laughs> Come on, you still do, you still up, upset about the Alabama loss. Here we go. One love here in reaching this portion of this program. He'll be with us soon. He's never coming. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get all over North Alabama. The main one here in Athens. Tell Zeke, I sent you over there. Rob, since you're a first-time player for everybody else's experience, this is Judge Jamie. Uh -oh. It's the number one game show on Facebook at 6 o'clock in the morning worldwide. <laughs> this is a wrong answer. Uh, this is the right answer. I'm going to ask a few questions out of yeah. the newspapers. They still exist, you know. I still read them. <laughs> Do? <laughs> we had a major announcement this week. Decatur Daily quit delivering. Uh, it's happened on Sundays. Now I get it in the mail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can watch on. You can check it out online. Yeah, you can check it out online. Yeah. If you pay. So I, I oh, still yeah. read USA Today oh, yeah. Daily. Here, here we go. Greg, you know, Coach Kipworth. They got a new sheriff in town over in Limestone. I mean, not limestone. Not limestone county. Not yeah. limestone county. Morgan in there for another 50 years. Morgan county. Morgan county. Morgan. At least four more years. Ron. Gillespie. Ron Puckett. Oh, I thought it was Ron Puckett. He was sheriff good guy, of Hartsel. Good guy. Sheriff. He was police chief of Hartsel for how long? 15 years. Four, 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. 13 13. years. I was closer. He had about 30 and 20 something employees. I know Ron, known him since he was a kid, did a story on it. He's a very <laughs> religious guy. Got a twin brother, looks just like him. He watched a lot of Heat of the Night, super, don't he? Super fast. <laughs> well, I like it. How many employees does he have now? 32. 45. I didn't say 40. 127. 200. Wow. Hey, wow. all right. Wow. A lot of people. What awesome. miracle on the river happened 10 years ago in New York City? New, New York, York City. City. Sully. Uh, Sully landed the plane. Sully. Sully. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that was an easy question. Yep. How many people were rescued that day from the plane? 175. 175. 175. 177. 56. That's it? I was <laughs> closer. 9-11, where were you that day? I was here. I moved here a few months before 9-11. I was in Dallas. Wow. I was in Dallas. Yeah. He was? Giving your... All right. I just closed on my house. Um, on my birthday, 9-11 happened two weeks. Just brand new house. Yep. Just happened. And oh, I you, here. you I saw just it. moved here? Just moved here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next question. Oh, I got, another, I got another question pertaining to that. Y'all bear with me a second here. What yeah. was the name of the guy that drove the ferry to rescue the people? Hmm. That's from it's the a Hudson, famous that's name. Hudson River, yeah. Tom Hanks. Bruce Willis. Vincent Lombardi. Vincent Lombardi. Nice. Y'all ever heard the name Vince Lombardi? Yeah. Absolutely. I wonder if he's any kin to. I don't know. Here we go. Here we go. All right. 100 years ago yesterday, you were born. <laughs> there was a ban on what nationwide? Alcohol. Alcohol, Alcohol beverages, that's right. Uh, I watched some of the movie yesterday. What movie portrays a lot of that? Untouchables. Untouchables, that is a good one. Alcohol, there it is right there. Busted up some steels. Now, Rob, you may know this, Donnie, because you both like cold weather. Antarctica is losing ice six times faster than in 1980. So here's the simple question. Antarctica has lost how many tons of ice since last year? Oh, per year, since 2009. It loses... 100. 300 million tons. No, it's, it's about... Tons of ice. 150,000 tons. 150,000 tons. That's a good wrong answer, know-it-all. <laughs> 278 billion tons of ice. So, so, a lot of ice. So, so, oh my gosh. Per year. It's right. a natural phenomenon. It ain't. Just don't buy any homes on the Florida coast. No, what? It's a natural <laughs> phenomenon. They're gonna be waiting. That's a no, lot of ice. Whatever free, whatever melts down there. Right now, Alaska's colder than Antarctica, so it freezes up in Alaska. It's I didn't know we would have a there. scientific you know, uh, deal up there. That's, that's, no, the global warming is a natural for occurrence, and God controls all that, so move on. Donnie will be lecturing everybody here before long about the climate control situation. Climate. And sleep deprivation. The new Ford GT that was, and Joseph's not with us today, oh, I saw that article, yeah. Yeah, cost how much? The high-performance Shelby GT500 comes with a supercharged 700 horsepower. The GT500, though, will cost what? $132,000. El Rono, $400,000. They're coming out with you know, the electric wow. version. I didn't too. read the article. I just saw the article. You know, they just had the car shows in Detroit this weekend, because y'all were up that way. Detroit? 
No electronic devices can be used during Brian. the playing of this game. What is the new? I'm bus. I'm sorry. What is the new popular car color for cars and trucks this year? Copper. Magenta. Matte black. Wrong. No. Silver. It is the official name of it is Coral. Sahara. It is a bronze. Yeah, I thought it was copper. I said copper, same bronze? thing. I was closer. Well, you had to say Sahara. Sahara. Yeah. Bronze. Sounds like a what is the number tactics. one color in the world for vehicles? Red. Silver. White. White. Silver. Black. Blue. Black. Blue. Black. Blue. White. Red. Black. Red. Black. 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 <laughs> number two. Roll Tide. Boom. What is Food Gate? Oh, the White House. They are making. Oh, don't get me started. Go, Zach. Tell me about it, Zach. Uh, I saw on ABC there. Christine Brennan went off on Fine Bomb yesterday about Lisa. about that and just try. They trying to make it political when, hey, usually when Alabama's win, they said they don't even get. They've never got fed. They they get Chick Fil A eat on the bus on the way. They've never been fed when really? they went there. Trump never fed Bama. Never yeah. got no. Right. Obama, Obama, never got Obama, 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 Obama. Nobody's ever fed them before. This is the first time. Bama well, ABC, so, so, yeah, I mean, they're going to bring them all, all these shelves are offering to cook them food and all that because Obama. It's a political thing. I Somebody said it was racist. How's that racist? I love a quarter pounder with cheese and weenies. Come on, look at me. Do all, all you need some fast food. food. That's what we're doing. No. Do no. Do no. Do no. Do him fine. He even got them some forks to use. And Clemson, that's a rarity. Yeah. You know, it's an agricultural school. Well, they stuck the fork in us, I can tell you that, because we're <laughs> done. Y'all done. USA Today this morning. About how many Democrats are supposed to run for president? 22. Right now, 25, I, I think. I'd say 20. 20. 30. 30. Exactly. 31. 30. How many of them are actually good. Democrats? Like one or two? Mm -hmm. Russell Socialists? What toothpaste company put in their first ad in Super Bowl this year? Colgate. Crest. That's the right answer. That that's what I use. I just threw That's what I use. I just thought that. Who's doing the commercial? Jamie Cooper. Cooper Company. Kristen Bale. I don't know. Luke Wilson. Luke Wilson. Yeah, yeah Luke Wilson. First time they've ever been in with a commercial right there. All right. Deluxe fishing houses. Y'all know what that is? You know, it's about ice season. Yep. Have you ever done that? Up there in Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota. Why does one of these deluxe, you know, you used to go out there and you see them in, uh, what's uh, Grumpy Old Men? That's what they do when they cut yes. the holes. Yeah, I see them in Alaska oh, all the time out there. So you say they, they drive their trucks out on the ice and drop the thing and leave. Yeah. Well, what's the new deluxe houses? How about how much they cost? It's got like, so, know, know, about 20, about, you know, so. about $15,000. Forty-one thousand dollars, oh, exactly. They have a crazy. bed, heat, direct TV, anything you ever need. Rob, that concludes the first easy part of this program. Now we move on to the hardest. That harder was tough. There's yeah. some tough questions. Yeah, well. I knew Sully. I mean, I knew yeah. That well, one. these are going to be tougher, right here. <laughs> uh -oh. How much money do you need to earn in Alabama to be considered rich? This was in AL.com. Fifty bucks a <laughs> year. Fifty thousand. No, you need to earn 132,000. Only a financial advisor would know the answer to this question. 52,000. Well, I mean, Rich, the different, that's, that's such a tough word. It is. 72. Exactly. $88,984. I wonder, because I, 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 I honestly think that they think I'm Bill Gates because they tax the crap out of me. <laughs> you could be Bezo and his new woman. Well, yeah. That's because you choose to wear the taxable colors of this state. <laughs> no, Only two guys up here will know the answer to this next question. A World War I German submarine has emerged. It shows its surface about, it comes to the surface about every two or three years. Off the coast of France. It's a UC-61. There it is right there. Uh -huh. What was the dive time of that submarine since you got 32 the minutes. How, how, how long did you stay underwater? Water? No, how long did it take it to go down? Oh, oh uh, probably 50 more. seconds. No. I'll let you have it, Greg. That's a good answer. 48 seconds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was the depth that it could go down? 200 feet. 370. Not as close as 160 feet. That's, All right, that's here we awesome. go. A little real estate question in here this morning. Shaq's got his house for sale in Florida. He bought it for four million twenty-six years ago. What's he want for it now? Eight point five. Thirty-seven million. Eleven point two. 
22 million. Wow. Only I a double financial, mine, I got it. Only a financial no. advisor could afford it. No. How big, no is his, how big is his garage? How many cars can he build? 10 car garage. 15,000 feet. 50,000 square feet. 17 car garage, wow. 6,000 square foot basketball court, and 12 bedroom, 35,000 square feet. Where is he moving to? He, he's got a house well, like he's yours. Got, he's got a couple of houses. He's got a house like yours. If you're looking for a house about that size in Athens, he's give us a call or bow at Marmac Realty. I bet the ceilings are real uh, high. <laughs> Shaq is watching the sea level rise from Antarctica, so that's why he's selling. <laughs> yeah. Gomer's oceanfront Hawaii yeah. home just sold. Golly! <laughs> do Shazam! Do that again, Zach. Golly! Shazam, Jamie! How much did it sell for? <laughs> Twenty-two million. Twelve million. Closer. Wow. Nobody else answered. All right. <laughs> Florida man, 37 years old, was charged and put in the back of a police car for illegal window tinting. But he got arrested, but now they got another charge on him. When they pulled him over and got him, he also had 40 grams of uh, cocaine on him for window tinting. What did he do to get an additional charge for while he was in the back of the car? I'm not saying. He cussed, he cussed, I'm not even going there. He cussed the cop. Culture? He pooped. He cussed oh. the cop. He got his butt whooped. Looked like to me. He got a black eye. He, got, he ate a big bite of the police car out and chewed the seat up. <laughs> oh, in the back of the police car. I he, he was high on that cocaine. All right, was. here we go. Last question, Robson. Still body was a real winner today. Winner take all. Winner take all on all the right. last question. All right. And all you folks playing worldwide this morning. Here we go. This is a good one. In Germany. Uh oh. Which part? Munich? Forty don't matter what part it was. It was at an airport. Forty three year old man, German. German man, was arrested because security noticed a bulge in his pants. John Holmes. <laughs> what? what was the problem? He was impersonating a banana. <laughs> was, was he the guy who carried the gun from Atlanta? Was that the fella? No. No, that was Tokyo. No. The guy was spotted because he had a bulge in his pants. Only Clint Leg would probably know the answer to this. He, he had, he had a slab of baloney. He had that. Oh, he had a slab of baloney, all right. <laughs> Well, he had a live boa constrictor in his pants trying to smuggle it. Buddy, ain't also, no way. Also known as a trouser snake. <laughs> a snake? You. Are you kidding me? John That's Hall, crazy. Right it's a trouser snake. What an idiot. That's crazy. All right, I got to go with Pent. No All right. We'll we'll take a break. Come back. Thank you, Clint Legg, for watching this morning. Y'all, hang on. Okay. Good morning, everyone. 41 degrees out there. Not too bad. Feels quite nice, but it's going to warm up a little bit more today. 48 for your high today. We do have rain in the forecast, though. That's 80% chance of that rain. Not this morning, though, so we're okay out there right now. Uh, tomorrow, 54 for that high, 48 for the low, and then Saturday, 61, 28 with the low, and we could see some severe weather, so keep an eye on that. And if you need to refinance, Hometown Market says give them a call, or you can go to savewithgloria.com. Just fill out your name address and phone number and we'll give you a call back to get the process started. Hey, I've just noticed the weather's <laughs> going to be kind of cool here coming up Sunday. And uh, Monday morning, obviously, Monday is uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to see a picture of one of the Ronnie Marks and them walking with those big coats on like they yes, always do. Yes, it was always so cold. Y'all know about how cold it's going to be? Mm. Uh, this Monday morning? Sunday and Monday. On that morning. March, right? It's always cold for yeah, that. Yeah, always. Yeah. I won't be there this year. <laughs> no. I 
no. we'll be there this year. You weren't That's there last year. I've covered everything there is to cover in Limestone County. Yes, you we have. have over the last 15 years. A couple years. times. Six, more and more. <laughs> but anyway, right. Coach Skipworth up here. What's uh, you out of school Monday? What's the latest at West Limestone? Well, we are practicing for indoor state finals that are February 1st and 2nd. And it's funny because one day they'll go out there and run and they'll complain because it's, you know, 35 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then the next day it's 52. Yeah. So it's uh, Alabama weather is all I tell them, you know. All right. You're I'm right. high-handed and fine, Bama, right. because anytime Bama gets beat, I'm fed up with football <laughs> until I get over it. And you don't want to hear the comments. So now I'm on Hallmark. All right. <laughs> I'm going to watch him feel good there. You dropped pretty far. Yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm on Hallmark, so I don't want to do fine Bob. But what's the latest on there? Is he down in Alabama? Is he getting a lot of, because uh, you're personal friends with him? Well, he got a, uh, you know, any, every day is different on that show, and you never know what's going to happen. And I think that's part of the, the draw to it. Right. It's unpredictable. And there's a, you know, every fan base has it, and Alabama has a, a large segment of people that are never happy. Mm hmm. You know, and we've done something that probably won't be repeated in our lifetimes. And they, uh, yeah, we got beat for it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, Paul is a master um, manipulator. Well, I was going to say interviewer. Mm -hmm. And he knows how to, if you watch the TV portion of his show, you can see him manipulate or, you know, more likely steer the conversation based on the sarcasm and wit he uses. And, some people don't see the show, they hear it, and so they think he's being serious. And so a bunch of uh, Alabama callers took him to task, more so than what we would you know, be, consider acceptable. So I, I just called in yesterday and said, hey, you're a good friend, he is. And um, you know, at the end of the day, all we're whining about is losing the championship game. How many other teams had the opportunity to do that? You can't, we can't win them all. I saw something on Facebook, of course, when you see it on Facebook, you never know if it's true or not, where it said, this was a quote from Paul, and it said, uh, Alabama is judged against perfection. Everyone else is judged against Alabama. Yes, you're right. And he said that, he said it the other day. The problem when you lose, you know, it's not that you lost, it's that you lost by four touchdowns. Right. Which yeah. is horrible. Because it's never happened before in his tenure. Well, good. It's humbling. Maybe but it'll it, just make yeah. him stronger. I mean, but you I can't guarantee win you this: um, Coach Saban is going to use that as a bludgeon mm. all season. Well, He'll have to because everybody else is going to be watching it. That, is that they're just making stuff up that that's not going to be that hard of a deal, or nobody wants to work for it? I, I I think people want to work for him. I think that the media are blowing out of proportion. One of the things you have to take into account when you talk about Alabama is that the fatigue is not only fan-based, it's media-based. And a lot of these uh, media types, they went to school places, and they, they want to see someone else win it. Well, someone else won it, but it's still, you know, anytime the king loses, you want to be down. You remember, you know, after they won in 2012, they, they didn't go, or they lost the next two years in a row, and everybody was saying he's, he's done with. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they won the following year and then won again. So. And we should have won it this yeah. year, but Clemson was just a better team on that day. Right. Hey. Much better. All right, Coach Skipworth, good to see you. Tell Paul I said hello when you see him. Rover from New Hope. I will do that. <laughs> well, Taylor, coming up next, our special guest is our old buddy Rob Prater from right here in Athens. Yes. Went to Mount Everest. Now, he didn't go to the summit. But he got close. He went. We're going to hear as a prayer walk, too. We're going to hear all about that coming up next. Y'all, hang on. And back here this morning, we're going to talk to our buddy Rob Prainer. Rob used to be the minister here in, uh, full time minister here in Athens at one of the local mm -hmm. churches and advertised with us, came mm -hmm. on the show. He, buddy, heard you like the sound? Your yeah. buddy. And yes. Golly, yeah. that was a long time ago. It was. Yeah, sure was. And uh, now I'm in Decatur, uh, Chapel Hill United Methodist Church. Give a shout out to Tommy Ray this morning. He's your music uh, yes. worship, worship leader over that way. Mm -hmm. He does a great job. Tommy's awesome. our old He's buddies. He's a good yeah. guy. Yeah. It's amazing how many people you associate with over the years that. Yeah. Somehow they're still connected 
doing something maybe a little different. You haven't seen them in a long time, but everybody's still doing something. And everybody knows you, which is funny. Well, thank you. Yeah, like that's all <laughs> Jamie show. Yeah, so your, your reputation is, you know, great. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for stretching out there and putting your uh, yeah, reputation you know. on the line. <laughs> uh, Randy and Rob the other day at Sports Fit. We were over there a couple months ago, I guess. Mm -hmm, Rob's mm -hmm. in there just working out. You know, working on my songs. What are you doing? Well, I'm getting ready to go Everest. I've always said I He's wanted to do that. always wanted to do Just that. to say I wanted to do it. Usually, <laughs> I didn't think now with Everest, you can only climb in like April and May. Is that when you're going to summit? People summit all during the year, but that's the most popular time, is okay. April and May. We went in late October, early November, which is the end of the season. It gets too cold, you know, to go up. How cold was it when you were there? On the, when we started the trek, it was comfortable, like high 30s, low 40s. Nights was 20s, 30s. But as you get higher, it got down to single digits daytime and negative single digits nighttime. All so right. as you get to the... Can you feel the difference in your breathing? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we're about to get into that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, the article in Decatur Daily says a prayer walk up Everest. You had a friend over there. Mm hmm Jason. We went to graduate school together. Okay. Yeah. You had a friend over. He invited you over. Well, we just planned on visiting at some point in our lives is to visit him and his family. And I called him and said, hey, it's a, it's a good year. My kids are in college. And he said, hey, while you're over here, do you want to go up to Everest Base Camp? That's how it started, right there. Now, Everest Base Camp, Everest Base Camp, that's where you can, you can go that far without having to do oxygen, right? Pretty much. There are some people that have trained that can go higher than that without oxygen, but that's, that's where oxygen's at half the level it is here. And that's where life ends. Like, there's no life past, like, at that point. All right, like, let so, me just ask you, how tough is it breathing when you get to that point? What did it feel like? It's, Was it scary? It is. The, the air is so thin that just a few steps and you're out of breath. And, you know, you can train all you want at sea level. Mm. And I even use an oxygen mask at the gym, you know, to restrain right. the oxygen, whatever. Look like one of the villains from Batman, yeah. Bale, or whatever, you know, <laughs> having that thing on. But uh, the breathing is so tough. Your heart is racing all the time, mm. even at night. So mentally you think you're having either a heart attack, an anxiety attack. You have to overcome a lot of stuff mentally. Like because well you're probably thinking, I know they warned me about this, but my body feels different, oh. and I'm, what if I'm really having a heart attack? If, and that's what people do. People have strokes and heart attacks. It's very common. The huh. helicopters and the health issues are... Now, when you're going over there, you fly over, you train for how long to get, to get in shape to go? Well, I try to work out regularly anyway, right. but, you know, so pretty much it, the last six to eight months, pretty much, I put an emphasis on So you on fly it. into Nepal, or where did you go mm -hmm. into? Two-day trip. Flew into, uh, flew into Qatar, uh, Doha Airport, Qatar first, then flew into Kathmandu, and then in Kathmandu you have to catch another hour and a half flight, which if you Google it, is the scariest flight in the world. <laughs> so I... Oh, Why? The, the, the airport's so short. The, 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 <laughs> you, land in, you land in an airport that we would not call an airport, but okay. it's, an, it's called Lukla Airport. It's, most runways in America are flat and wide. This was like this. It was a, oh. You land on an incline into a mountain. Either side, you, you fall straight into the mountain, you die. Right. So, so, this is, this is, so that was mentally, to me, the airport, and, and plus they don't use navigation. The oh. pilots are just doing it by sight. So if clouds roll in, you're, oh, wow. you're in trouble. So that, air, that airplane ride was a thing. No I was, navigation to no navig guide you in? They just. Now, what are you thinking at that moment when you're getting ready to land? Uh, man, pray, stick, stick, pray, that, pray. stick that landing, man. That's all I'm saying. Stick that landing to the pilot. Uh, so you get with your friend, and then, mm -hmm. and then where do you progress from there to get to base camp? How, how does this work? We land at Lu Everyone goes through Lukla. That's the airport everyone lands at. And then they, they trek up. Um, so it's, it, it's probably three miles a day or so. Probably. It was, not, it was nine days. It, probably about 20, 20 to 25. It takes that far just wow. to get to base camp. Yep, because you're always zigzagging through the mountain. Crossing suspension bridges hundreds of feet above. There, there are things that you do out there that if you're here, you would like get afraid of maybe. But when you're there and you're so focused on the mission, like we were, I was crossing bridges, I would never, I'd be scared to do here, you know. And but when you're there, you're just like you just go through it. Now, do you have phone reception this whole time you're out there? We have some pictures too. I think we're gonna sh sure. uh, show you. I didn't know about. what to expect. I had no clue what to expect. But over the years, it's gotten more westernized. So, um, so yeah, there, are, there are some cell phone reception at certain points. Along the way, are you in awe of the mountain the whole time we were there? Incredible. That's that's. I was telling the art the the lady wrote the great article for the Decatur Daily um, that all you're really doing is focusing on your next step because like there's rocks there's you know you cross the street. Are there stream. a lot of people there as you're doing this too? There yeah there there's you see people yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now was this in the? That was Lukla. I was right outside of Lukla Airport. Okay. Those those children, and yeah. you walk right past their house. They were just so cute. From where you were <laughs> to summit takes how much longer? 
All right. Well, that could take another six to twelve weeks. That is get out that long wow. to summit to summit mountains like Everest. You have to be a full time climber with sponsors. You have to be it's wealthy. Like you can't really have a job. It takes like one hundred fifty thousand dollars, <laughs> doesn't it? it uh, they That's they have a, a license. You have to get a permit basically to summit. It's about fifty thousand dollars. And then you got to pay all the shirkers. We'll get into all that, that just stuff a moment. and all the equipment. So and you have to have. You really can't have a job like we have jobs. So get to this to, to be a summit. You know. It, it takes right, a lot of. You were at 10,000 feet, right? Now, that picture there, we're going to talk about that fellow. That going was a, back, Brad. That right. was a. Go back to that back picture. No, not, not that. that no, one. not that. <laughs> this guy here is the oldest Sherper still living who went yes. up with Sir Hillary. Yes. And that. In 1953. Was, to meet him uh, kind of by accident, mm -hmm. basically, at, at, after the second day of hiking, stopped by like a little village. There is like a village up there, Namche Bazaar. It was really cool. And we you went, went up the mountain? Yeah. Huh. And there's, you know, kids and little shops and kind of carved right out of the mountainside. It was really cool. But we met him at his restaurant and hotel, and um, he was, he said, hey, you know, I'm like the last driver. He has driver. a restaurant? Yeah. Wow. Okay. When I say restaurant, it's not like here. Oh. All right? <laughs> it's but just it's, like it's a, a shack. place. But it's, it's the only place to eat there. Yeah. Like you can have like bottled water and they'll save rice and some whatever, you know, but it's not, it's, it's, it's different. Food. It's different, yeah. But he, but, um, and I say hotel, it's a place to sleep. No, no, he, it's, it's just whatever. But he was telling us stories about 1953. He was a young man, he was 20. And there was, fo there was 400 porters carrying kerosene, food, supplies. And 15 guys were carrying just the silver pieces to right, pay to the pay workers. Them, which are. he was telling details I never heard of. And his stories weren't, that, that was the highlight of the trip for me. To me, the, really? Nepal, the, the, the culture of the Nepalese. Now, what's the part I read? That you tell the story about him, and they got the 400 porters and then the mm -hmm. shirkers that go all the way up the top. Some of them do. That they were going to cut trees down as they ascended, and they got up there. There was no trees. Somebody had to go back down. Well, yeah, from base camp where we were at to base camp two is like 1,500 more feet, and that's where a lot of deaths begin to happen, and a lot of you know. Anyway, so they got up to this place, and they saw a crevasse. They couldn't pass it. So. There's no trees up there. There's nothing. He went down with a few other guys, went back down to Namche Bazaar. I mean, this is incredible. I mean, this is going up, then back down, chopping down trees, bringing the lumber back up to build a bridge. <laughs> like, I, it's, it's, it's just amazing. What, when what I saw that, and of course, I, I, you know, I read all these articles about Everest because mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing people do that. Now, about how many people summit a year? I don't know, a I, but, hundred, but, but, it? but it's, it's a not a lot. Mo most people I met, like these teams from Germany, Switzerland, Japan, base camp is the goal of most right. really great climbers around Where the world. Mean? Yeah, but, but the, the serious people, the ones who are really climbers, go to the summit. You know, they, they're the ones that and are And if you incredible. die, they still leave you there? Yep, yep. Mm. I mean, where do you go to the bathroom? Yeah. Or something like that. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Well, if you're climbing, like, say, uh, in Alaska, like Mount McKinley or Denali, um, there are no places to use a restroom. They want you to bring a container and use that. Here, because of all the last 50 years, 60 years of Westerners going there, they have these little places along the way you could go. So, um, okay. but it's, man, it's crude. <laughs> <laughs> was there a lot of trash? I was say, how do you get there? behind something? Because I hear that the, the, over the years, the trash has just built up up there. I did not know. Now, the picture, it's funny, the picture people ask me about is that, that one on the cover. Right. Um, it looks like a used car lot with, the, with those things there. Yeah. Those, but actually, that is Buddhist prayer flags. That okay. just happened to fall because of weather. The one that's in the paper. So it's not really trash. It's, it's just Buddhist. Yeah, so there, there wasn't much trash on the way. Right. No, it was pretty Let's good. Let's talk about a little bit from the religious what aspect a beautiful of this that wrote the yeah. article about. What was it like being a preacher and everything, going up there, as close as you're gonna get, basically. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's probably like the fourth highest spot in the world besides the summit of Everest. I was below mm -hmm. it. There's Mount McKinley, 22,000, and there's Kilimanjaro in Africa, which is 19,000. So you know you're at highest I'll ever go. Um, it was really the it, it was the will to keep going when your body is craving oxygen and it's not getting it. You have to stop. You have to. You get it, it wears you out and. It's just that it's almost like life that, in life in general, whether you're a Christian or not, you have to just push yourself to get through things. Mm -hmm. And that's how it was, to push yourself, to just to keep every one, sometimes it's one step in front of the other. It's that, that tough. Yeah. difficult. Yeah, it's just, you just have so to focus. So fat people ain't going to make it. Well, there, there weren't many. 
overweight people up there. <laughs> but um, so, how long did it take you to get to base camp? Nine days. Nine days. Yeah. So you're saying it would take how much further? Oh, it would take anywhere Six, between seven weeks. I, I would say a couple months, eight weeks, a minute. It's that difficult. Oh, it's. It's, it's unbelievable. It really is. When you can't breathe, you just realize how great it is being at sea level. Like, breathing was the hardest thing. And high altitude sicknesses, I heard all about them before I left. And now you got sick. I got sick. And it was pretty much the last couple days. And um, you can't do This is when you realize all the stories of people passing away. At, at base camp, um, you know, they just get a sickness. They can't. They, it just hits you really fast. I had a really high fever. You get scared? It, I was going to say, not just yeah. like a cold, but you yeah. had a high fever and just... It starts at 14,000 feet. To me, 14,000 feet is when you get the massive headaches. Mm -hmm. And a uh, retired Air Force um, person trained at Colorado Springs said they put the guys in chambers, pressurized chambers, at 14,000 feet, young pilots, and that's when disorientation begins. They can't sign their name. They can't do a kindergarten puzzle. Really? So 14,000, your brain starts to get affected. And the higher you go, it just gets... Are there any doctors anywhere nearby, or are you on your own? At a certain point, you're on your own. You are up there on your own. And that's when I got... So it starts with the headaches, and then I was getting really massive ear aches. Then I got this really... I don't get nosebleeds, but I had a massive nosebleed. Mm. And I knew my body, my head was just feeling like it was in a vice. And your, your heart's racing. And then I got a, like about 103, 105 fever. I, my, I got so, the sickest I ever got. So are you not saying, okay, we got to turn around. Let's go back. Well, we, guys talk about it, but I, I was like, there's no way. I'm like, there's no way. I got too close. I wasn't going to stop. It's, it's mind over matter at that point. I just, no. There would have to be. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I forced myself that last day to get out of the sleeping bag and go. And ever wow. at any point did you say, I'm coming back to Summit one day? Never. <laughs> Never. No, that's not a dream of mine. It really isn't. Was going back down as easy as getting there? Well, because we were sick, I said, hey, guys, you know, um, let's, plus there, it's a, there was a scheduling conflict. We had it all mapped out, but we missed the day by accident. We were kind of running out of time. So, and three of us got very, very ill. So we could have, it takes like three days to climb down. I said, guys, I said, if we're sick, let's just rent a helicopter. So I said, let's just do it. Oh, so you can't, that's an option. Well, really, the fellow, we met, we met a guy who said his brother does it. I, I guess it is, is an option. We just we asked, or this guy told us about it. And um, so we, we flew, it was the best. I'd never been in a helicopter before. That was the highlight of my trip. <laughs> I, I, it was like you were right by the mountains. And, you take a helicopter right here. That was yeah. our highlight of our trip in Vegas. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I loved it. So I'm glad, like, that would be part of my next trip was me to plan that. But, um, but we just, we, we had a... The fellow who planned it, we planned it together, he, 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 we missed a day. So people had to make flights and get out of there, so we... Now, when people summit, what I know, they stay up there only a short time. I was at, we were at base camp for 30 minutes. That picture you see in the front, with, yeah. Okay, you're so up there and you're there 30 minutes. Yeah, when you go up to the top, you can only spend 15 minutes or so at the, at, at the top, 29,000, yeah. It, 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 there's just no air, there's nothing. How long did it take you to get unsick, to get well? Um... I was sick that last night. The next day was our last day. We were going to go see the base camp, you know. So I drug, drug myself, got dressed, went, started to go. Once I saw base camp, it's like, it's like you, uh. you felt like a relief. I felt, so I started feeling better that next day, just going to base camp. It's, well, that's base camp right there. Yep. That's how it. would you describe, uh, like Dory just brought up, how would you describe your whole ordeal? Was it worth it? Oh, yeah. The, the sick part was just a small part of it. Okay. The whole part of seeing the mountains, it's like, it's like an outdoor cathedral. That's where the religious part comes in. When you look around and see the sky's a little bluer than it is here. It's a royal mm -hmm. blue, it's a beautiful mountains with the snow cat. It's, it's like being in an outdoor cathedral. Pictures don't do it justice, mm -mm. Too, does it? And so, it's just, so that was something I would do. Is it hard to believe that people would pay a couple hundred thousand dollars to, to almost summer, die? And then when the people <laughs> all around them are kind of poor, too, aren't they? Yeah, ne ne Nepalese country yeah. is, basically. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a challenge, you know. It's like it's there. That's why I went. It's, it's something you just want to do to, see, you know, to, to see if you can even do it. All right, adrenaline junkie, what do you do next? Uh, two or three other mountains to climb. <laughs> I'll just sit in my easy chair at the house. No, <laughs> I, was like, no I would think about doing some other things, but I'm, but I'm not one of those guys who jumps okay. out of bungee. No, that, that, that's, a, that's sheer will to get up to that point, and that was great to do. So.
Wow. Well, congratulations. Glad you came up to tell us all about it. It was good seeing you again. Yeah. Oh, it's great seeing you. Yeah, it's great. Thank yeah. you for allowing me to share the story. <laughs> and Sunday, great so yep. story. You, when's your church when you preach it on Sunday morning? 1030, Chapel Hill Road, Chapel Hill United Methodist Church, right behind the mall, a couple miles behind the mall. And if somebody wants to invest a few dollars with you, you'll take that too, right? Edward Jones up in Fayetteville. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Tennessee. If I could help, I'd love, love to help. Oh, and I gotta say, Rocky story. movie's my all-time favorite. Yo, Jamie, how you yeah. doing, huh? <laughs> Thank you for having me on this show. Yeah. You know, it's always good to see you. I bet you do that every day, don't you? Uh, once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. You're you guys I can't hardly climb up the stairs at home. <laughs> up on the set. And hey, man, Rob, good to see you, man. God awesome. bless you. And that was a wow. great, great telling Thanks the story. Sharing. I appreciate you guys. Thank great you. Thank you for me on. Yeah. Uh, we'll take a break. We'll be back uh, next week. So uh, I don't know nothing happened. Uh, NFL playoffs. It's just going to be minus one in Kansas City. Because I'm a Patriot fan, but don't really care, but I'm a big Tom Brady fan. So, well, and then football's about winding up for us. But anyway, uh, a lot of people are off on Monday because it's a holiday. Martin Luther King will be off that Enjoy day the too, long weekend. So, we'll see y'all next week. Bye bye.